as you probably know, Krakato is uh, very, a very complex product and uh, as a side effect, the user interface uh, is also kind of complex. Um, Krakato often provides multiple ways to achieve the same goal, mostly because we feel that people uh, tend to think differently and we don't want to provide a single uh, way to achieve a result. And we also want to support all the 3ds Max uh, typical workflows without uh, um, forcing you to use a Krakatoa specific way. Uh, but the 3ds Max ways are often slower than what could be achieved with some smart scripting. So you'll notice that in many cases we have uh, a feature done the Max way and a feature done in Krakatoa way. Uh, basically different points of access to the same thing. In many cases, you might think that you're using Krakatoa correctly and uh, in reality you might be choosing the slowest path. So this webinar will concentrate on uh, showing you what the best practices are when working with Krakatoa, how to do less clicking and do more rendering. The th uh, first thing that we'll uh, have to take a look is uh, how do you access Krakatoa? It uh, drives me mad uh, seeing people that actually know Krakatoa pretty well using the slowest path possible to even assign the renderer. As you probably know, in the case of 3ds Max, you would open the render dialog, then you would scroll down and then you assign uh, Krakatoa render. There are already five, six clicks here and we have automated the opening of the user interface of Krakatoa when you assign a Krakatoa renderer to save you a click, but still this is the slowest way imaginable to get there. In order to make it easier for you, we have provided macro scripts which are available in a dedicated Krakatoa menu. It is generated automatically when you install Krakatoa. You can turn it off if you want, but it normally it's there and it provides all the macro scripts already listed. And using a manual uh, approach, you can go to customize user interface and um, create a toolbar, find the Krakatoa um, category and drag all those macro scripts, or at least those that you think you need on that toolbar. And since this is a manual step, most people skip it. But if you're a serious Krakatoa user, if you're using Krakatoa half of the day or the whole day doing production work, it really is a bad idea to do that. Uh, the reason for that is not only does the macro script uh, provide you a single click access to the user interface, it also has some added bonus features like storing and restoring the settings of two different renderers, Krakatoa and whatever your other render of choices like V-Ray, Mentoray, Scanline and so on. So for example, right now we have Krakatoa assigned as the renderer. If I click the icon, which switches it back from Krakatoa to the previous renderer, I get a prompt that says, I'm going to revert to the default scanline renderer. Say, yeah, okay. And says, yeah, the last time I used it, I had a render path start. Do you want to restart or say, no, I don't care about it. But at this point, if you take a look at the render dialog, we're in uh, default scanline renderer. So if um, I do some work in it, and then I want to go back to Krakatoa, I click the button that says user interface and it says when I do this it's going to save a uh, render preset with the default scanline renderer settings and it's going to assign Krakatoa as the new renderer. If I click yes, it's going to load the last known settings of Krakatoa saved previously. If I click no, it will switch uh, Krakatoa and to Krakatoa but will create a completely new instance with default settings. If I click cancel, nothing will happen. In order to show you how this stuff actually works, I'm going to change the resolution of my scanline renderer uh, settings. I'll switch to, uh, um, let's say, active time segment. And I'm going to pick some uh, testme.exr file. Oops, that wasn't a good uh, character in the name. The test me, I cannot type today, .exr, that's better. So now we have a path, we have a, a resolution and we have a time set up for our scanline renderer. I switch to Krakatoa, say I want a fresh instance of Krakatoa 
And if we take a look at uh, rendering, uh, currently it has exactly the same settings because nothing has changed. I'm going to switch to a custom range between 10 and 110, for example. I'll change the resolution to 320. And I'm going to change this output path to test me uh, KMX, Cryptoa Max. And I'll switch back to Scanline. I say, yeah, okay, please. And it says, I found a different test me EXR output path. Do you want to restart? I say, yeah, sure. Now I have my time settings. I have my resolution. I have my output restored as they used to be when I last time used Scanline. And then I go back here, say, yes, please load the original settings, restart the path. And I have my Cricutor resolution, my Cricutor timing, my Cricutor output. So as you can see, just using those um, two icons here, you can swap between, between two renderers without even remembering what the setting were. Uh, Crypto is going to deal with that. This is what I just showed. And there is another um, icon on top, which uh, has the letter F, like front or focus. So, for example, if I minimize this dialog and uh, I want to go back to using Krakatoa, I will just hit that button and it finds where the dialog is and puts it in focus. For example, if I open uh, track view and uh, work in it and I don't even know where my Krakatoa use interface is, it's currently in the background, I just click that icon and it comes to the front. I could go into the customize user interface settings and uh, go to keyboard, go into the um, Krakatoa uh, category, find this function which is bring Krakatoa to front and assign a keyboard shortcut, for example, control K, which is currently unassigned. And now I actually have a keyboard shortcut where I'm working here underneath Krakatoa, just press control K and it comes back. If you do this, you'll never hunt for it and you'll never have to go and open the render dialog and then click on this tab and then hit this button. This uh, is three clicks and that's two clicks to make. Okay, so the Krakatoa user interface, as you saw, is a large floater. In fact, it's two large floaters. Uh, the other one is optional and every rollout could be, uh, I'll press Control K again and this opens the uh, user interface if it's not open at this point. Um, I have multiple rollouts here, and uh, these are pretty much all the rollouts that can be displayed in the Krakatoa user interface. But sometimes I want to see multiple at once, and because they are relatively large, there is the option to, for example, I want to watch my channels while setting the settings. Uh, if I click this icon uh, in the top right corner and hold the shift key, it's going to dock the uh, rollout into the secondary floater, which is linked currently to the primary one. It's linked, you can see at the bottom, there is lock secondary to primary, so they're moving together. I can unlock them and then make them independent, so I can put this one on a second monitor or something, and they don't move together now. Um, what I can also do is, if I click without holding shift, that icon, it floats that, uh, um, rollout as a dialog, it's a floating dialog, and I can do this with every rollout that exists in the Krakatoa user interface, so I can have pretty much all the rollouts as separate dialogs, and I can place them on a second monitor side by side if I want. I never really do that, but I usually use the true docked uh, floater side by side. The checkboxes in front of the rollouts show the, uh, which ones are currently visible, and I can go and uncheck those that I don't really want to see at this point. I can float things side by side. I can use this uh, to, for example, disable the safe particles also, and so on. If this gets too uh, funky for you, you can always open the Manage Krakatoa user interface uh, rollout. Here you see all the rollouts that exist, and the letter in front of them shows whether they are docked to the primary, floated as uh, dialogues, or if I, for example, uh, switch this to secondary, I get the secondary uh, rollout, and now I have the letter S in front. I have buttons here to quickly select those that are docked, floated, or um, um, docked to the secondary. And the left column also shows me which are currently hidden. 
all these settings can be uh, saved as a preset. So I can go here and say, this is a strange test that I'm doing right now. So I'm going to save it as test. And I also have I already saved default. I saved it yesterday. Uh, layout and if I say load this it's going to load whatever I had before um, so it has some of the controls in one place and everything is docked to the primary and so on and I can uh, modify them again I can bring this guy back here and I can save another preset or I can go back to, to this test that I was doing before and load it by just hitting the button. So uh, if you find that you're not using some of the rollouts, for example, very few people are actually using the ambient PME or even know what it does, you can hide it and just not have it to the user interface. Uh, some of the rollouts, all the rollouts actually remember the open state, so if I have the memory channels open and close the dialog and then I open again, uh, it, I hope it will open as it was before. And uh, some of the rollouts actually open automatically. If, for example, if I switch to save particles to file sequence, the uh, settings for partitioning and for saving can open. This is actually an op option in the preferences and currently have specified that when I'm opening, when I'm switching to the save particles uh, to file sequence mode, it's going to open both the saving rollout and the partitioning. I can switch to not open uh, the partitioning one. And uh, in that case, when I switch back to uh, rendering, I'll close this. When I'm switching now to saving particles, only the output path and the channels are being expanded and the partitioning isn't. So I have the option, if I'm doing mostly partitioning, I can pop up both. If I'm doing general saving without partitioning, just saving a single sequence, I can have my, in my preferences to open automatically. And if I switch back, it closes. Uh, um, one click less again. Another thing uh, that you can do here is you can actually use the right-click menu with different accelerators, shift, control, and control, and shift, and so on, by just selecting uh, on the list and uh, switching, hiding, uh, floating, and docking. But uh, having the general uh, rollout at the top, which controls all this, is usually enough to go and set up it once and then just use it as it is. Um, we went to the management of uh, presets and um, hiding and hiding and uh, docking rollouts. But one of my favorite features that very few people use is the fast rollout navigation. All the controls, I mean all the rollouts actually, are accessible through controls in the uh, main controls rollout. On top we have a couple of the uh, important sections of the user interface that are not exposed anywhere else. For example, if I want to switch quickly to the memory uh, rollout, I can click that button. All the other rollouts collapse except for the one that I just requested. And on top of the rollout, I have a button that says back to main controls. If I click that one, I'm back here. I go to globals, I set my globals, hit here, I'm back to main controls. I want history, it opens the history, I'm done with it, I'm back to the main. At the bottom, we have a couple of features including the overrides and the matte object settings and the APME. If I, for example, enable matte objects, and then I want to set what my matte objects are, I can right-click this button, I go to the matte object settings, I create my matte object, I create the name selection set with it, hit back to main, I'm back to working. So I can not only turn on and off certain settings of the matte objects uh, rollout, but I can right-click and quickly navigate make more detailed settings, go back. It's actually listed here, right-click buttons to navigate to detailed settings. I don't know how many people actually use that. 